you have more. Well, I don't. Have, you know. Yeah, that's I mean, what I My husband well, has a full time job in front of it's all a hobby. And, and when we retire, I figured it would be nice, you know, cabin up north in the woods yep. and, you know, have something to do. And we have about 59. This, you could saw without the snake skin, you could do the same thing, just relief. So the other leather would be a relief one. Red double, and then I like to split it. You get a nice continuous stitch in the top. Skip into that one. Dropping back to this one, and then when I come through, I split it. And it kind of gives it that herringbone effect. And if you want to get crafty, you know, you could you could eliminate the rivets. Start sewing all the way, and then I start my knot. Then you'd be able to hide your knot, put your knot underneath. You wouldn't have the big old knot on top. Usually, if, as long as you keep everything from getting it tangled up, it does, it does it on its own. And this is, you know, and a lot of guys will go along and either skype this out, or you can use, you know, something like this to create the trail, if you will. And it kind of recesses your stitches. But when I'm doing it this way, she sits it down tight and it does it. I'd love to have a sewing machine. I got a I got a leather shop just north of me, and if I if I truly want to get something sewn, he'll sew it all for me. So I'm skipping. And I'm going back to. You know, you could. Right. Yeah, you bet. This locks for tickets to go, too. You know what I mean? When you tighten it up, it's split like this, and as soon as you tighten that up, keep your stick locked behind it. I came out the last time, came through, the needle went underneath the whole stitch. Then I split it, and I came back over the top, and I just did a double square knot. Okay. So I've got so I've got one under, one over, so it'll never. I don't rivet them all. But if I don't know who's going to use it or who's going to take care of it, I usually rivet it.
like to burnish the edge. And then once I got that, then I, I use a finer grit, kind of burnish the edge, and I'll actually, I'll actually buff it when I'm done. what the stamps were intended for. Right? This is supposed to be an imposter. Put two of them together, we can make some deer or elk tracks, whatever you want to call them. get too busy. Thieving. No, well, I'm, I'm good at either or. I usually mix them. So I'll put a base on, and what I like to do, the highlighting, the highlighters, yeah. I like to use because it pulls this stamping out more. So I'll use a base. It can be feeblings, it can be whatever it is. You put that coat on, so you're going to get it a base to crown, then I add the highlighter. Pops it out a little bit. 